Hi family, it's me, Miss Sam. How are you? Hugs and kisses to ya. So it already looks as if um, Keefy D, they're calling him the leader of the Crips. Never heard that title before, but um, seems as if he is already beginning, or he has already begin to, began to snitch. Not only on himself, but on Diddy in particular, which is why I'm making this video. Do you remember I did a video, family, about four weeks ago in regards to the death of Kim Porter and our conclusion at the end of it was until further notice, until there is more evidence suggesting that this, connecting this man with this event, i.e. the death of Kim Porter, then it's, um, we can't continue, we can't point our fingers at him. Now, I was watching a footage, piece of footage that you've probably all seen by Jaguar Wright, okay? And uh, Jaguar, as crazy as she is, she does, she, she taught the things then because she was part of the industry. In the footage, she mentioned all of the people who dropped dead around Diddy, and Diddy's the last man standing, okay? Now, could we put it just down to the fact that Diddy is a Scorpio male and they're usually the last one standing because we Scorpios, we work with the energy of death all the time, but also, me in particular, I work with the energy of rebirth. The re-emergence, the, re the phoenix, the rising and so on, and the transformation energy and that type of thing. So is it just that? Is Diddy just lucky in that way uh well let's look at the people who have died who have been part as jaggy was as jaggy or right was saying who have been part of uh bad boy records heavy d i was trying to do a heavy d impression impersonation there but um them no worry we <laughs> All right, hold oh, on, let me not put my foot up. So I was just about to get comfortable. So yeah, you've got Heavy D, you've got Andre Harrell, you've got um, Kim Porter, you've got, um, I mean, you could even look at people like Craig Mack as well, and so on. Who else? There's somebody else that we're missing out as well. Of course, we've got Biggie. And all those people that started out with P. Diddy, they're more or less, they're gone, yeah? Are uh, the people who started Bad Boy Records, him, Andre Harrell, Heavy D, and uh, the other day, uh, what's his name? I can tell you how I feel about you. Him, Quincy's father, he almost, you know, we almost lost him. So, and that was Kim Porter's first baby daddy, so, I'm going to pull some cards without further delay because this seems to be a huge Pandora's box and I want to see how Diddy is feeling, okay? Because uh, you can't run from energy, you know. <laughs> it's uh, here. Oh my gosh, the card that I'm looking at. The card that I'm looking at on the back of this deck. This, this card right here. Let me show you what it is. See, I, as I spread out the cards, I'm just going to say to you, this is the Rider Waite deck. Baby, this is the card that's facing me. This is how Diddy's feeling. <laughs> He's feeling victorious. Vic, Vic, victorious. He is not scared one little bit. Not one jot. But he's sad. And this is a manic sadness. Just taking the cards from the bottom of the deck. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we also have a three of cups here. So just these three cards alone. May I go tell you what's, what the coup is? Um, this man called Keithy D, he's in a very, very sensitive, sensitive spot, sensitive position, because there are so many people who, just like he was back in the day, would do anything for a strange, do something strange, something different for a piece of change. 
So what we have now is a very old man, but he is remarkably vulnerable. Doesn't seem as if he has much loyal soldiers around him indeed. Here is Diddy on the horse here, and you can see in the background he does have people who are loyal to him. Yes. It's incredible, right? Yeah. But I think the loyalty is kind of like a double-edged sword. It's loyalty on the basis of, nigga, I don't know how you managed to get away with all this shit for so long, okay? In regards to Diddy, because this is Diddy here on the horse, victorious, coming back from battle and doing a lot of things that a lot of people who have done the same thing and run the gauntlet the same way that Diddy ran the gauntlet, they haven't survived, but Diddy has survived. Do you understand? There are many people who have done the dirt of the industry, done the dirt of the Illuminati, had friends in high places, but they have not withstood the course. They have not won. They have not passed the finish line. Indeed, their friends in high places have taken them out and snatched them out of the game and discarded with them in a one, two, three, poof. And away but Diddy has lasted the course now the double-edged sword in regards to the people who are loyal to him still is because them too were involved in the dirt and if they were to turn do an about face turn them fears from him and turn their back on him ah well then they would become vulnerable so what do you do you stick with the winning team this is the winning team. You see, Diddy's being congratulated by other people who are also holding wands. Okay, this is the Six of Wands card. They too are holding wands. They went to the battle with him. But you see, they have not been elevated like him. He's the one on the white horse. Up high. Elevated up high. He's won all the prizes. He's got the accolades, the awards, the cash, the money, the clout and the protection now somebody said in the comment section of the video that I did this morning um, if did he has a covering of course <laughs> of course he does he does which is why the man who self snitched and who has been arrested now by LAPD and by uh, Las Vegas uh, Metro Police in connection or accused with the, the murder of Tupac Shakur, he's been arrested for that. They've not said he's been an accomplice or whatever, they've put the finger on him. Because he put the finger on himself. Because he was intoxicated by the clout that comes from the likes of Vlad TV and whoever else is so free, he wants to sit down on. He said, give some of these people a, a chair and a few dollars and uh, the promise of a meal and a free hotel and they'll spill their beans Whoa. Whoa. and I mean what you know let's face it for an aged gangster what else is really going on in life what really I mean you know Yes, he could enjoy his family, keep quiet, live a nice, quiet life, but it's the notoriety, the same notoriety and the fame and the clout that he was uh, expecting on that night. Remember, they went and they turned up, do you not remember, Three of Cups here, they turned up in the hotel after killing an icon. They turned up. They partied. Somebody asked them if when they poured out liquor, Keith D and them, Orlando and them, when they poured out liquor, were they pouring it out for, for Tupac? The irony of assassinating somebody and then half an hour later pouring out liquor for them? What? When Tupac's soul was basically still there on the street there in Las Vegas, Nevada, sitting on top of the car his spirit sitting on top of the car his spirit standing there in disbelief and shock nigga y'all got me this time y'all got me what his spirit was there 
so they couldn't pour out nothing for him for him they would have deleted themselves within hours if they had done that because that is such a transgression on the veil it's like somebody tugging at a curtain tugging at a sheet and it's thin and it's delicate and it can break and it can tear and it can be perforated and someone is tugging at it so Diddy is very much protected yes still and a lot of people are not going to say anything about what he's done and how they're suspicious of this and that and the other because if they're suspicious of Diddy they're suspicious of themselves he did not do his dirt by himself indeed it wasn't even his dirt it was a mandate it was a task something that he had to do now people are going wild and crazy now on the internet and they're saying well you know we feel that Jay-Z should be pulled in too now since they're pulling in all the pulling in all the old OGs <laughs> pulling Jay-Z too because he has something to do with Aaliyah I did a reading on that it was somebody else and if Jay-Z had anything to do with it or if there's any blame that can be laid at him and Beyonce's door remember them Batty and Bench they're one and the same can't talk about Jay without talking about Bay can't talk about Bay without talking about Jay them are the same but if anything guilt is supposed to be laid at his door, it's because Aliyah may have been killed by somebody who really loved and adored and respected Jay-Z. Could have been that. You know, sometimes, family, we have people who really do love us. They just love us. They just love us. They, 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 and their love for us is just crazy and they, it cannot be explained. And if we grumble to them and we complain to them, if we pout, do you know what? I'm so upset about Book de Woe. Oh, this person really offended me. Oh. Then those people that we love and who really check for us will go and do something because we've been hurt and they don't want us to be hurt. Do you understand, family? Do you understand? Somebody really loved Jay-Z. And would have done anything for him. That is the person who got rid of Aaliyah. That is the person who orchestrated the plane crash and put them all on an overloaded, overbungled plane. That's the person who planned her demise. And it could have been in a variety of ways. If she had survived the plane crash by some miracle. You see, that's a tried and tested way, disclaimer, of getting rid of the ops. Politicians do it all the time. Do you remember there was that man called Ron Brown? Anyhow, they wanted to get rid of JFK's son, but JFK's son, John Jr., is a very smart guy, I remember. He was one of the first kind of semi-political celebrity readers that I did on this on my channel this was before Nipsey Hussle died before he was assassinated I did a reading on John Jr who is uh, JFK Jr uh, former president of the United States son and he was smart because he knew that they had it out for him you see the other day they tried to kill his uncle some man turned up in, in some kind of secret service gear, pistol here, guns, all kinds of stuff. And he was apprehended. And to all intents and purposes, he looked like a federal agent. But he wasn't. He was there to assassinate the son of Robert Kennedy, who I mentioned in, in one of the readings before, about a week ago, two weeks ago. I was talking about the ambassador hotel anyhow the whole point of the matter is family this is diddy see this three of cups energy here this is the macabre celebratory energy that that negroes with money and who have been who are up to here 
in the dark arts and in the world of the strange and who have been in and out of the dank waters the murky dank waters of sea creatures who don't like them pour in water pour in liquor pour in wine wine to symbolize blood water to symbolize money and emotions tears we cry we celebrate we cry we celebrate we cry and we celebrate and turn up the same strange macabre energy that Keith D and them had after assassinating Tupac Shakur the icon rapper bad boy rapper well, he wasn't a bad boy rapper death row rapper but a bad boy thug life tattooed all over his chest him the one who enthralled us and captured us when he sang don't you know she's got a don't you know she's got a don't you know that she's got a baby Keith D and them went and turned up in some hotel room they poured the liquor down their throat <laughs> they didn't pour nothing out for Tupac just as well because he wouldn't have lived disclaimer to snitch on Vlad TV two decades later and before we get to the morning card which is a macabre strange strange morning it's a lamenting and a sadness but only for the parts of Diddy's soul that he has dedicated to thinking about how people hate him and don't respect him as much as they should he's an icon Diddy says to himself how could you hate me how 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 is it that I have to fight for love from y'all how is it that everybody's pointing the finger of suspicion at me and all I've done is raise up the culture no Diddy you didn't raise up the culture what you did is you raised up Satan high on a throne and made him overlook hip hop like the granddaddy, like the chief musician that he is. So, Diddy is also celebrating as well as mourning. Is this what you call a dichotomy? I don't know. <laughs> but it's a strange, bipolar, topsy turvy, schizo, joker esque energy of celebrating your freedom celebrating life celebrating love knowing that you and your accomplices are going to handle in a dark way those who talk too much and those who snitch and implicate Sean Sean Combs Janice's son Melvin's son See, Diddy's had it out and wanting to get even since he was a young boy, since he was a wee boy. Since the old Negroes snatched his father. He went cold. Couldn't feel as much anymore. So death is something that he is acquainted with. And it already touched him and took. And within Diddy was the rebirth of a demon and an accomplice of Satan who doesn't care. So right now Diddy is celebrating and turning up because they'll soon disclaim I get rid of the snitch and all of the people who may be itching to say something because uh, they may feel it's unjust for Keefe in, the, in the, his 60 odd years of life for him to be taken now when he's supposed to be enjoying some cigars and grandchildren and stuff like that. They feel like it's an injustice. Why should he have to go and put on orange uniform now and go to prison? Why? 
It's been so long. But you see, when Scorpio males are in this kind of celebratory mode and their name is being called here, there and everywhere, people are accusing them, accusations flying all over the place. And they're sad at the same time. Oh boy, it's a dangerous situation. And that is an understatement. My name is Miss Sam, <laughs> a.k.a. Madame Celeste, Miss Sam aka Madame Celeste, aka Sudan, aka Jamaica. And this reading, darlings, has been on how Diddy feels about Keithy D. Being arrested for the death of Tupac Shakur. And the uh, possibility of Keithy telling on him. Vic Vic Victorious